3.2, introduction to functions. So the whole idea with the graphing thing is to kind of prepare us for not just graphing points, of course, but to graph lines or to write equations for lines. And this is to help us understand a little bit more about lines, even though in 3.3, that's when we're going to actually see the lines on the graphs. All right, a function is this. I'm not going to read that because it's pretty nerdy. And I assume by the time I finish, you'd be asleep. Okay. So a function, uh, and I'm going to make this in my own words, but a function is where if you have an x value, it has to punch out the same y value every time. Okay. So here's what I mean. Is functions are like machines that, well, function, right? And so, uh, again, for those of you that are old enough, not that I know that any of you are, but they used to show this in like a conveyor belt like this. I know my conveyor belt sucks, but I think it still works. Right, so if you put something in, and this would be considered what we call the input, and then it would run through this machine, and sometimes if you were lucky, because the computers were awesome, they'd have like an animation on there. And then it would, it's gonna punch out something which would be considered the output, okay? And no, I'm not gonna, I'm not, I'm not gonna animate this, but. Um, so for example, uh, let's say that I go into this machine, let's say I put in, uh, I'll put in a common value like two, right? So this goes in the machine, it's gonna, let's see if I can do this with, with some technology, right? So I take this two, I'm gonna run it through the machine, it goes through, and, and sometimes it'd have a steam pipe up up here at the top and it would push out some smoke or some steam and I don't know why that felt so satisfying but it did. Now if I put this through the machine sometimes what will happen is it will it, it could it could put out a four right you know we don't know what happened to the two I mean we could find out if we if we open the machine or the function and find out right but here's the thing is what I don't want to see with this stinking machine is let's take this two let's put it in um, would we consider it functioning if somehow it punched out 14? No, I wouldn't because I put in a two, I expect a four, a four to come out, not 14, right? It's like, man, you put it in a frozen burrito into your microwave and then out comes a pizza. You may like that, but it's not what you expect. In fact, I don't know that you'd eat it because it's like, what kind of nuclear reaction has just happened right here? You know what I'm saying? It's the same thing with functions. Okay. Whenever you put in a value, and it doesn't matter how many twos you have, you can put in a million twos, no matter what, you should always expect to come out the same value. Okay. Well, what does this have to do with the ordered pairs we've seen? Well, it means that when we see an ordered pair like two, three, it's important for you to know that the x values is what we call the input, and the y values are what we consider the output. Okay, at least, at least when the machine is functioning, right? Now, let's say I, I go to the machine again, right? And I put in, sorry, I meant to be that, that should be a four right there. Uh, if I go to the machine and I put in a two, there's my input, and, it, and out comes a four, it's like, hey, this thing's working awesome. I put in a two, a four comes out, hey, we're still happy, right? Okay, but remember I put in a two and then some something happens right there, 14? Okay, that's pretty jacked up. Now, you know, we'll put a caution sign on this machine and say, please don't use this machine until we get this thing fixed because it's not a function anymore. It's not functioning. I feel like I've overwhelmed my uh, <laughs> analogy so. status quo for the day. And it's not just the two, by the way. Like, if you put something in, you should expect the same thing to come out. And so, and but and that's for any number, though. If you put something in, you should expect the same thing to come out, whatever that something is, so and whatever that thing is you put in. Pair. So the ordered pair tells you what the what you put in the machine and what the machine spit out. Now, just to make sure we're um, we're not too overwhelmed with vocabulary, is the x values are what we call domain, and the y values are what we call range. And we're gonna, we're gonna be hearing that vocabulary, not so much after this section, but in later units we will, okay? Uh, like this, this rule could have been something like, uh, right, like two x, two times x. You put in your input the x and then out spits a four, right? Which means that, I mean, if it, was, if it was actually functioning, then of course you'd never get 14. You'd just always get a four. In fact, you could put something else in like a three and you'd get a six out, see, see what I'm saying? So we want to determine which of these sets, remember sets are usually 
notated with um, capital letters like this. And oh, there's our fancy brackets, which we love so much. We just gotta determine which of these are functions, okay? Now, to do this, the first thing you should do is to look at the x values, okay? There's, they, they put it in a negative four, then they put it in a one, then they put it in a five, and then a seven, and then a 16. Just based on this amount of information that's given to us, there's no indication that it's malfunctioning or that it's not functioning. So this one, I would say right off the bat, is a function. Oh, okay. And, and the reason that is is because none of these x values repeat to show us that uh, it could possibly not be a function. Okay. So just because it, it doesn't repeat, if the values repeat, then we have to check what's coming out of the machine. Okay, and I'm talking I'm talking about the x values repeat, right? So let's look at the next one. So see, they put in a negative one. Okay, that's fine. Then they put in a three. I'm not I'm not seeing that they're putting the same thing in to see if this thing's functioning yet. Then they put in a six. Okay, still no repeat. Oh, there it is, the negative one, right? So let's look at these two specific values here. Uh, on the on the first one, they put in a negative one, out spits a zero, the machine, right? The function. The second time they, they put in a negative one and it spits a two out right off, right, right there. I don't need to check this last value. I don't really care what it is. I can see that this one is malfunctioning. So I'm going to say that this one is not a function. So right now, and, and I think we get really used to seeing these in some kind of linear fashion. Yeah. Or so, you're right, so, so it represents some kind of um, pattern, right? right. With functionality, we don't care if there's a pattern. Not at all. Uh, all we care about is that what you put in, in the same thing needs to come out every time. So yeah, on S, set S right here, here they, we put something in and something came out, but the next time we put the same thing in, something very different came out. And that's a good point. The Y values, I don't care what the Y values are. I mean, unless the X value repeats, of course. But if, the, if their Y value repeats, like let's, let's go to uh, set R right there. I'm gonna keep it a function, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna change the way it looks, right? This is hypothetical. If that was an A right there, that doesn't matter. The Y's repeating does not matter unless the X repeat Right, because then this was this is zero, so this one would have to be zero in order for this set S to, to be a function. All right, so set G again. Let's let's look at the x values. So there's this. I'll try to use different colors. Uh, there's a zero to start out with. Then there's a one. So they're they're different. That's okay. But now I got another one right there. Okay, so let's analyze what that the ones I'm putting in a one, and the first one that I put in spits out a three. Okay, that's fine, but the second one I put in spits out a six. In one, out six, in one, out three. Yeah, this one also not a function right there. All right, so uh, uh, set F right here, right? So let's just look at the X, what we put in, because again, we don't really care what comes out unless we put in the same thing, right? There's negative four, there's two. By the way, this positive four right here is not the same as negative four. Mm -hmm. Okay, so make sure you keep that in mind. Positives and negatives are different, even though they may look the same like this one does. There's 8 and 15. I don't see any duplicates of what we put in, so automatically we would have to say right now that this is a function, unless, of course, we could get more information, but right now we don't, so we have to say that it is functioning or that it is a function. So it, when we start seeing the actual functions, we can tell just visually with a quick visual check. Sometimes it takes a little work to get to that visual check, but um, just by a quick visual check, we can tell if it is going to be a function or not. Yep. All right. Uh, now, this one says, is it a function? Uh, it, it's not saying it's a set either, but it just wants us to declare the domain and range first, right? So I'm going to say the domain, and remember that the, when we say domain, we're really talking about x values here, right? Values. And uh, with domain and range, since it is a set of values, yeah, we need some fancy brackets. I've done better before, but I'm going to keep it. So I'm just looking at my x values, right? So there's negative 5. Come on, negative five, negative four, negative three, negative two. So I'm just gonna list all these. And whether you list them from least to greatest doesn't really matter in domain and range. But I do believe on the homework, they do want you to list them from least to greatest. So just be careful on that, okay? Now, with domain and range, which I probably should have mentioned before, if you see values that repeat, you do not want to list them more than once. Okay, so when I go for range, and I'm just gonna use R for range, uh, and so the range, of course, is all the y values. And yep, we do need some fancy brackets. There's an s and a 2. That's okay. 
All right. Well, it's the same Y value right there. Okay. So uh, there's only one value I need to put into the range, and that is negative nine right here. Okay. So uh, let's close that up with some fancy brackets. So e again, even though the nines repeat, we don't need to show four different negative nines right here. Just just one will do. And then the last question, is this a function? Remember, even though the y values here are repeating, I don't care about what comes out of the machine. If I put it into negative five, there's nothing to say that something different would come out other than negative nine. Same is true with negative four, if you put it into negative three or into negative two, which means that this is a function. Let me put yes, a function. I don't know why, but that makes me feel better. You know, I mean, I, I'm not saying you'd have to go that far, but it makes me feel better inside. Almost inevitably uh, on a test, you'll see a question like this, a test or exam or a quiz, and, uh, and students will get this one. They'll say, no, it's not a function because we got repeating values. I don't care about the, and with functionality, we don't care about the Y values repeating, what comes out. All we care about what you put in and then what comes out. It's in that order. All right, so, so let's reverse this, right? So domain and range, is this a function? You know, let's list our domain. Right here are some good old fancy brackets. And all I'm seeing here in my domain are negative two. So again, I don't need to list that four different times right there. It's just a negative two. The domain is your X values. R for range. And some fancy brackets. Ah, I've done better, but uh, I'll go from left to right. Uh, you know, I'll make these in order from least to greatest. Three, four, five, six. And again, if this was an exam that I was grading, I wouldn't care if you did six, five, four, three on that. But we do need to close it with fancy brackets. Last question here, is this a function? Well, here you put it in a negative two, out spits a negative six. That seems fine, but next time you go there, it spits out a five, and then even further, not that we would have to, but you put it in a negative two, it spits out a four, you put it in a negative two, it spits out a three. What the crap is going on here is not a function. All right, next up are mappings. Now, you may have seen a table like this one here that we have on the left, okay? And these are technically ordered pairs, just without the parentheses and the, and the comma, right? So uh, I've seen this before, and I do it from time to time as well, where I'll just put the parentheses and the comma myself. That would be the ordered pair 0, 2, okay? Now, a mapping is just a different way to show values, essentially, from a table or uh, a set of ordered pairs, okay? So see how 0 and 2 correspond with each other? Now, you, remember, your x's are your inputs. Maybe I should write that in there. Yeah, so x's are inputs, y's are outputs. And it actually works the same way in a mapping. So you got your input. So this is where you would start, right? Input, you got to put something in. And then your y's are your outputs. And that can tell you pretty much your domain and range. Now, this one looks pretty. Um, and... I can see just from this list of ordered pairs that is given in the table that we didn't have anything that was repeated, right? And we could say, well, let's go ahead and add some to it then, right? So let's say we put in a two, out spits a six, boom, that's good. Uh, and then we would say, yeah, this is a function, okay? Now over here in the mapping, again, zero, two, so we have to connect those with a line. And again, it's from input to output, so the arrow it needs to be pointing in the correct direction. And then, of course, 1, 4, 2, 6, 3, 8, 4, 10. Now, even though I put in an extra 2, 6, I wouldn't need to put in an extra arrow of 2, 6, okay? Uh, again, it's kind of like the domain and range repeating thing on that. So let, let's change this up just a little bit, and I'll try to change the table to correspond with that. Okay, so instead of 4... Now, uh, let's say that right there, let's say I got, uh, I don't know, four. Okay, so I, I four, four. Now, I don't need to put another four here. Remember, it's, it's kind of like the domain range. We don't need to show repeating values because I can go from four and then just put an arrow up here to four, right? The question is, is this a function? Well, some students would say the line's crossed, so it's not a function. It's not pretty anymore. Well, um, functionality doesn't, is not determined by prettiness. Yeah, this is still a function because look, when you put in four, we know what comes out. When you put a one in, you know what comes out every time. Even the two, still you know what comes out, right? Put in the two, you know what comes out. And so this would, would still indicate that, uh, that we have uh, a function, okay? So, so let's go back here to what we had before. 
So what would we need in order to make this not a function? Well, you could go to the table and think about that, right? Well, let's say that you put in a three. Uh, in order to make this not a function, what kind of y value would I need? Just anything but eight, anything but eight. So let's say I had a three and a two, okay? Now that would not be a function because up here I put in a three, out spits an eight. Now I put in a three, it spits a two out. It's not functioning anymore. What would that look like in the, in the mapping? It'd go from three to two like this. So what changed? Well, you'd have two arrows coming out of one of the inputs. That's all, okay? Two or more, I should say. Because, you know, you could say, well, I'm gonna put in a three and then out spits a 10. Okay, well, now it would look like this. Still though, you just can't have more than one value branching out, one street, if you will, map on the map coming out of the three. So when our maps functions, I guess I'll type this out. I know that's not so eloquent, but it still works, I think. By the way, when I say out of the inputs, that's any of the inputs. It could be two or more. It could, like if you had two arrows coming out of zero, it still would be not a function. It just has to, that, it just has to happen to one of these, uh, one or more of these, okay? Yeah, what the crap kind of machine is this one? Well, it's a nice one because it'll spit out bacon if you put in a P. E. But, yeah, so. Yeah, now it, it won't say, but like I said, usually, almost always, on the, on the left, you should always expect these to be your inputs. And then your, your uh, on the right here, this would be your outputs, okay? So they, and they may not label these all the time like we just saw. It's important for you to know that the left is the inputs, the right is the outputs. So we would look at this one, and again, some students would say it crosses all over the place, so it's not a function. No, that's not why it's not a function. It's not, by the way, but it's because of these two arrows coming out of the E pointing to bacon and Mars. I mean, you know, that's a pretty tough, uh, tough choice there. You put in an E, are you going to get bacon or Mars? I mean, I take bacon myself, but if you prefer Mars, that's fine too. Now, I kind of made this problem deliberately to be quite as, um, I don't know, insane as you can imagine. Like, what's negative ZZ? That's, it's because we don't care what the output is, all right? As long as there's two arrows coming out, that's all that matters in order to determine if this is a function. I guess I should write that in here, right? Not a function. All right, so function notation. Function notation is, I mean, it's shown right there, but it's this, okay? And yeah, if you're 12 or 13, you'd make that spell a funny word. But since we're in college, hopefully that's not really the case anymore. But if you do, whatever, all right? In any case, this, this by itself reads, uh, well, it reads f of x, right there, right there. So, so f is function of x, meaning that whatever we see after this is dependent on whatever's in this set of parentheses. This is not multiplication of f and x. Okay, this is, this is a function notation to tell you that we are actually looking at a function. Now that means that whatever we see after that should also give us a function. So if you put in a two, you should expect the same value out no matter what, right? Um, oh yeah, so, and, and when we replace the x with, in the parentheses with a value like we see here, that means that we are actually going to replace x with whatever value it is in whatever the function is, okay? So, uh, well, I guess we'll see some examples again. We're replacing the x with whatever value it is in the equation. Now, y is dependent, x is independent, which I don't know how important that's going to be, but sometimes in word problems, it makes a so big difference. Is... So math people read this function of x, and sometimes it's not even, a, it, it's not even an f, it's, it'll be a g. But again, this would read function g of x right there. Now, I'm, I'm not saying you have to memorize that, but eventually you'll just, maybe you'll get it down. Um, well, so I, what, I guess we haven't seen this quite yet, but you, you know, we'll see something like y equals uh, 12x minus five, okay? And that would be considered a function. And we can write it like this with x and y values, kind of like we would on a, on a Cartesian coordinate system. And we could graph that, by the way. But now, if we see it as a function, it would just write, instead of y, it would look like this. And it's important to notice the difference here. The only thing that changes is instead of using y, it's f of x. That's it. Okay. Now, f of x, 
from my math nerdy perspective is is a little bit more specific because you can start replacing whatever's in here with some value okay then I mean, you know it's a function of whatever this value is okay it's just it's a straight notation on that pure vocabulary okay so right here this is showing a function of x equals 9x plus 2 but we want to know what f of 3 is okay so for me i'd say look let's take this function that we have and I'm going to rewrite it on purpose, although I'm going to start replacing values, which you will see. And I can see that it's f of 3, right? So in that parentheses there with f of x, I'm going to replace the x with 3, which means I need to replace all the x's in the equation, like this one, with 3. Oh, so it's 95. Uh, it, be careful on that, because some students, you know, we, we get kind of caught up with the... Uh, um, mechanics of this stuff it's like oh 93 plus 2 and yeah they, we do get 90 i've seen that on a test by the way so and then it's just evaluating from there right i mean you could put this in the calculator 9 times 3 is 27 i know i'm doing it by hand even though i said it doing the calculator but whatever 27 plus 2 is 29 and so we end up with f of 3 being equal finally to 29 and this is how we would want to write the answer because this communicates an ordered pair for us. Okay, so this would be an ordered pair. And again, that's the nice thing about function notation. It tells you the x value, and it tells you its corresponding y value. So this, this would be on a graph of 329. And yeah, we have seen this before, right? It's just it was shown in a different way. So uh, to, to kind of relate to what we've seen before, all they gave us, at least I think we did this back in unit one, what was it, lesson two? It's say 9x plus 2, but then they'd say, look, x equals 3, now evaluate. It's the same thing, it's just shown in a different way, that's all. All right, so here's a, this is kind of an interesting looking function, but I think it's something we can do. Because we're just evaluating this, it really isn't, it, it probably is not as big a deal as you think. Yeah, this uh, f of 0 is going to equal this uh, 6x to the power of 2 plus absolute value of x minus 4. Uh, but there... And I hope it's okay if I just write over these. But I'm going to replace the x's with, well, zeros on this stuff, okay? Now, by the order of operations, you'd want to do the parentheses first, which is, in this case, an absolute value. 0 minus 4 is negative 4. And the absolute value of negative 4 is 4. Now, I would do, uh, well, 0 to the power of 2, which is still 0. And 6 times 0, yeah, it's 0. So 0 plus 4, you guessed it, 4. Which means over here, that if I wanted to write this formally, it'd be f of 0 equals 4. Now, I'm going to emphasize this once again, is that that function notation gives us the ordered pair of 0, 4, which means if I wanted to graph this for some reason, I could. I could graph that. Now, the second part is, uh, well, it's the same. It's the same exact function. And so let's bring this down, right, like this. Kind of covered the 4. But now the x is a 2, which is okay. So let's replace the x's with 2 in this, uh, in this um, function. Okay. So by the order of operations, we would have to do the absolute value first. That's 2 minus 4. Sorry, that's kind of uh, um, sloppy right there. But 2 minus 4 is negative 2. The absolute value of negative 2 is just 2. Okay, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, just to save some space, I'm going to operate with the 6 times 2 to the power of 2. 2 to the power of 2 is 4. Then I would multiply that by 6 to get uh, 24. And that's a positive 2 there, so uh, 24 plus 2, 26. So that means f of 2 equals 26, which again would give us from this same function uh, the ordered pair... 226. Okay, now, since we already know how to put these on graphs, that means if you wanted to start to graph this as a line, here's two values that would be on that line that represents this function right here. Finally, f of negative 3. So let's take that function and replace the x's with, well, negative 3 now. So uh, there's an x that's negative 3, and here's another x that's negative 3. And solving this, once again, from the absolute values first, negative 3 minus 4 is negative 7, the absolute value of which is just 7. 
So we're gonna have that's positive seven. And then uh, uh, that'd be negative three to the power of two first, which is positive nine. So I'd have six times nine, which gives me uh, 54. And then 54 plus seven would be, looks like 61. So f of negative three would equal 61, which once again would give us the ordered pair, negative three, 61. I want to add one extra slide to this real quick. Okay, so if, if you saw a graph, let's pretend like these lines are nice and that's an x-axis and that's a y-axis, okay? So if I drew a line, it doesn't matter if it's curvy or something like this. Uh, you know what, actually, I'll try and make it a little bit more specific. Uh, so on a graph, you can tell if it's a function very, very, very quick with what is called, and some of you know what I'm talking about here, that's called the vertical line test, okay? So here's my vertical line right there. And if I scan this, let's see if it'll let me, come on technology <laughs> okay, well, oh, okay so we scan this from I, I go from left to right but it doesn't matter which direction you go is the vertical line test if it ever goes through this vertical line more than once and I, I know it's kind of getting pretty steep there but it never actually crosses more than once then it would be considered not a function this one only went through this this uh, line once and so uh, this would be cons this would be considered a function all right. All right. So so let's look at uh, another graph here on this one. So you got your x-axis and you got your y-axis like this. Okay. So uh, uh, if you looked at a curved line like this one, you'd say, um, is this a function? Right. So once again, we we kind of use this um, vertical line test like this to just check to see if it is. So I take it and I scan. I'm looking for if this red line will go through this purple line more than once at a time. Okay, so you see once it makes a connection, there's a, uh, there's an intersection between the purple and red lines. And the, the further I scan this, even stopping like right here, uh, again, the, the red line's only going through the purple line once. This is what we call a vertical line test. And uh, it, it works for this particular, um, this graph. We'd say that this one, this graph would be a, um, a function because it only scanning this it only goes through that purple line once right let's change the line to look you know something like this and uh, whatever this pattern is and let's go ahead and make a uh, vertical line test for this one not my best vertical line but it'll, it'll do okay so I'm gonna take this line and see as I start scanning this it's only going through that green line once there at the bottom but at the moment I hit right here in fact let's bring this over even further. See, now it's going through that uh, curve in three different places. Yeah, now this one is not a function because for this one individual x value, it's going through uh, three different times, which means that we couldn't make a good prediction on, uh, we couldn't be sure about our prediction if we chose this particular x value. Choose this x value, we, we don't know if we're gonna get this one, this one, or this one. Um, this, these are these outputs like this, okay, which is why this again is not a function.